Hi, hello, welcome once again to my scientific blog Discover Social Sciences. Uh, so once again a reminder that YouTube channel uh, on which you are now watching this video is coupled uh, with a scientific blog which I uh, which I write, which I have been writing for three years. The blog is called Discover Social Sciences. So, if you want to discover more, uh, you can go to the description box below the video. There you will find that link, which by the way is displayed like below me in the video window. So you go to the link discoversocialsciences.com, you click on that link, uh, it takes you to the website of my blog and there you can find a written update uh, which has the same title as this video. So I'm placing another update on my blog and I am following, generally speaking, uh, the thread of research which I started about one month ago. Um, I'm compiling my notes from three years uh, or part of my notes into a, a, a book. Uh, about the role of cities in our civilization. As a matter of fact, I started writing this book uh, as I was observing the strange impact of uh, lockdowns related to the COVID-19 pandemic, the impact of lockdowns on cities and mostly on my hometown, on my home city, Kraków in Poland. Uh, now I can observe those uh, mass street protests under the general blanket name of Black Lives Matter. And I have some interesting thoughts and, and some interesting observations ab about it. Uh, there is uh, that new structure, uh, at least a temporary structure, which emerged in Seattle uh, in the United States. It is called, uh, or it has an acronym name, CHAZ or capital, uh, a Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, uh, which uh, those protesters have uh, occupied and formed in Seattle precisely. It is interesting. There, there is a social movement uh, which uh, has very strong marks of anarchism, because to me, with the knowledge I have and, the, and, and with the life experience I have, with all the due respect for your own opinions, the Black Lives Matter movement is essentially an anarchist movement. So we have an anarchist movement and anarchism technically aims at destroying the incumbent social order. But as soon as those protesters in Seattle managed to like, loosen up that social order a little bit, they formed a town, because the Chaz, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, is a town. Uh, it is a, an urban structure inside an urban structure. Uh, it is interesting to notice that, for example, over the last like 40 or 50 years, uh, new social groups which claimed to be radically cut uh, from the rest of society, like cults, uh, like radical political groups, they tended to go mostly into the countryside. And there they formed those ranches, farms, communes, something that was like far away from cities. Now we have a social movement which tends to like uh, re... I am looking for, for the right ex expression. It is as they, they were try as, as if those protesters were, were trying to form a city of their own to experiment with it. And that makes me return over and over again to that central thought that cities in the history of mankind, cities are demographic anomalies. This is that idea that keeps uh, circling in my mind and, my, and I am trying to wrap my mind around it. Uh, I'm trying to understand how it works. Huh? So uh, I observe the current events, those mass street protests. I observe the effects of lockdowns and of the pandemic. And uh, I interpolate it with the results of that experiment 
uh, with the neural network, the experiment on the emergence or on the disappearance of social roles under the impact of an external stressor and external disturbance factor. Uh, by the way, that experiment or the description of that experiment is to find on my blog uh, in the update entitled The Perfectly Dumb Smart Social Structure. Once you go to discoversocialsciences.com, you will find it. Anyway, in that experiment, uh, the very simple, the, the otherwise very simple neural network which I made, uh, when I made that network, like deliberately lose cohesion. Uh, so when I excluded from its learning process, the observation of uh, distance between social roles, strangely enough, in the first phase, it led to like a complete disaggregation, complete decomposition of social roles. But then the network spontaneously started to re-establish a new structure, a structure which I didn't program in it. Uh, it is in, in, interesting to interface it to, or, or, or to interpolate it with the current events. We have an anarchist movement which in the beginning is destructive, but then it becomes like auto-constructive. Those protesters more or less intuitively try to, to create something new. By the way, as uh, many people now take a stance on that Black Lives Matter movement, uh, well, I don't really feel like taking a stance because I am Polish, I live in Poland and very honestly, uh, the issue of racism is not the, of prime importance in our country. Yet, that movement, those uh, protests are all, already spreading across Europe. It has an impact on our economy. Uh, so, on the other hand, if I pretend that something doesn't happen, it still is happening. So, uh, I can as well try to wrap my mind around it. So my basic stance on those events is that people claim they want things, but very frequently what they claim they want, what, what, what people say they want, is not really what they aim for. I assume that if people gather in, ra in large numbers, what they want most of all is to gather. They want to experience community. They want to experience that specific oxytocin loop that we humans learned over centuries and over a millennia to develop in our social relations. Defining a common, uh, 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 defining a common social enemy like those ugly privileged whites or those ugly police officers. Def de def defining such a common opponent uh, helps reinforcing that oxytocin loop. It helps reinforcing that feeling of being together. And I suppose this is, this is a reaction to lockdowns. This is a reaction to pandemic. Uh, we generally feel threatened. Maybe even we are practicing uh, social change before like the big change. And by big change, I mean adaptation to climate change, which is inevitable. Uh, so. I try to look at those events as a scientist. Uh, I have a lot of I have a lot of emotions in me in connection with that, of, of course. But as this is a scientific blog, I prefer being scientific instead of being emotional. Okay, so this is uh, about it in this uh, video editorial of mine for that uh, for another update on my blog. So once again. You can go to the description box below the video. Uh, there you find the link discoversocialsciences.com. You click on the link, it takes you to the website of my blog. And there you can find an update with the same title as this video. So have fun with science and have fun with life. Bye.